Hello and welcome to another Gundry's Guides. After a couple of wonderful visits to the insect room at Manchester Museum, um, many, many thanks Diana Arzusa in the last few weeks, um, I thought I would do a video on the Queen Alexandra Birdwing. Now some of this has been covered in previous videos on this channel, but I thought I'd concentrate solely on this species for this one. Um, this is the world's largest and many would argue the most beautiful butterfly. Um, the males are just insanely pretty. They're, they're an iridescent species, so this is physical colour providing those greens and blues, um, whereas the abdomen is a bright yellow, which is believed to indicate unpalatability um, provided to the butterfly by the pipe vine, which it eats as a larva. It's unknown if the females are unpalatable, but it's quite hard to imagine that they wouldn't be, because why would one sex evolve that ability and the other wouldn't? In any case, um, males peak at about 200 millimetres across, um, and the female can reach 30 centimetres. So really, really spectacular things. The species was first collected by Westerners by Stuart Meek in 1906, um, he was collecting for Rothschild um, and the first specimen that was brought down from the high trees using a shotgun. So the type specimen, which is held by the Natural History Museum in London, is genuinely full of shot shotgun holes. As you can see from the label on the image of the female, uh, these specimens were collected only a year later and also by Meek. So they are historically of vast value. And yes, they are now um, 118 years old. And just look at them, just absolutely wonderful. Quite a lot of this comes from the excellent Swallowtail and Birdwing Butterfly Trust website. Uh, just to clarify, I mean that quite a lot of the words come from that website. All this imagery is mine. Uh, the species was described as having a fragmented distribution at best in 2016, and it is believed that the eruption of Mount Lamington in 1951 wiped out something like 250 square kilometres of prime habitat. Um, so it has probably been endangered ever since then. It was protected from trade in 1966 and was added to the CITES 1 list banning all trade in 1987. The species feeds on a single species of pipe vine, although it turns out it can also feed quite successfully on a second softer species, um, which is far more common, the so second species being Aristolochia tagala, um, as I said, which is far more common throughout New Guinea. However, the female will choose only to overposit on the first pipe vine species. So efforts are being made to attempt to selectively breed them to... Uh, lay eggs on that second species. Of course, in captivity, one can move the caterpillars, and so that is less of a problem. Um, speaking of captivity, the excellent Swallowtail and Birdwing Butterfly Trust has set up captive breeding in Poppendetta in Papua New Guinea um, to try and increase the population. Hopefully, this will then give rise to releases into the wild. Adults are fairly invulnerable, although they do get caught by some very large orb web spiders. Adults are also eaten by some arboreal mammals and birds, while the eggs can be attacked by ants and heteroptera, and the larvae are vulnerable to toads, lizards, cuckoos, drongos and kukuls. There is also some parasitism of the larvae by unidentified tachinid flies and of the pupae by some parasitic wasps. So all of these threats to the juvenile stages make captive breeding a very, very good idea. Males have been found to swarm around the coela tree when it is in flower, and females will not accept a male for mating unless they have visited those flowers. This fact means that quite a lot of, ter of otherwise good territory may be rendered useless by the absence of the coela tree, so the conservation of that tree is very, very important for the conservation of Ornithoptera alexandriae, perhaps almost as important as the pipe vine. 
uh, with the pipe vine often existing about 40 metres up into the canopy and the butterfly genuinely being high flying in as a whole, it is very hard to do surveying of this species. Uh, deforestation for commercial logging and oil palm is the main threat um, and although some hunting, illegal hunting for collections still occurs, that is not as important as the effect of clearing of habitat. Uh, the species food plant, the pipe vine, has been planted under tall mature oil palm in an effort to see whether the species can colonise oil palm. Because of course if it does, then one of the major uh, threats to its um, extinct, to its survival, can be reduced. And it is not that difficult to plant a large amount of pipe vine in suitable oil palm, oil palm habitats. The Swallowtail and Birdwing Trust hope that in time, uh, some tourism income may be achievable through the success of and uh, the re return of the Queen Alexandra's Birdwing in decent numbers, or at least its um, the reduction in its risk of extinction. Um, and many, including conservation agencies in Australia, would argue that legalised trade in specimens, as long as they were captive bred and as long as suitable quotas were in place, that this would provide serious income for local people and that might that might be used to help the species survival. It's certainly the case that local people would need to benefit from the species in some way so as to give them, quite rightly, a reason to protect them. The two groups I was with in February behind the scenes. Uh, the first was my second year module in bio biology and wildlife documentation. And the second group was the University of Salford Masters in wildlife documentary production. And we had a wonderful, wonderful time. I'd really like to thank Diana and Matt um, at the museum and also my students, huge level of enthusiasm. I remember last year, Kit Walcott on the Masters said that the way I looked at these bird wings was the most sincere look of love he'd ever seen in anyone's eyes, ever, which I thought was quite fun. The Queen Alexandra is one of perhaps one and a quarter million known insect species on Earth. There are certainly more in important insect conservation stories that affect things like global pollination, which is of course massively important, and of course this butterfly is ridiculously big and shiny and obvious and famous. Nonetheless though, um, as William Foster, curator of insects at Cambridge, once said to a group of students, if you don't care about conserving this, you're in the wrong room. And hopefully, when I'm an old man, this species will be just a little bit less perilous in terms of its conservation. Um, would I love to go to Pop and Detta and see them, even in captivity? Uh, yes, of course I would. <laughs> that would make me very happy indeed. Um, so we will see. Um, apologies for the large watermark. As you can imagine, these images are rather special and very, very hard to get. Um, and thank you for watching and listening.